Good morning, everybody. Hello. My name is Tiffany Almeida, and I'm with Pretty and Paper Crafts, and this is Coffee and a Card. My favorite day of the week is Sunday because I get to go live with you and craft and show you these products that I love from Stampin' Up! Um, and we get to play, we get to talk, and we get to visit, and it's just my favorite day of the week. So thank you so much for joining me. I see some people coming on. Hi, Barb. Good morning. Wow, I've got six people on. You guys must be excited for pigment sprinkles just as excited as I am. <laughs> okay, so prizes for this week. If you go to my raffle copter and answer the questions, there's two questions. You'll be entered to win. Um, and it's a really important tool when you're using those pigment sprinkles, which is the Stampin' Spritzers. So you'll all be using them today. You get a pack of two. Um, when you're entered to win and your name is drawn, you'll get a pack of these two Stampin' Spritzers, which you'll need. The prize for hitting the share button this week, again, is going to be the shimmery white cardstock. So make sure that you um, enter both ways to win, okay? You're welcome, Tammy. I'm glad you like the prize. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and move the camera, and then I can't wait. We're gonna show you what, what fun we have in store today. So today, you can see, I'm using a media mat. This is Tim Holtz glass media mat um, because when you're using these pigment sprinkles, you need a surface that's very um, water resistant, waterproof, can't be stained, okay? Um, and my crinkled up here. Just as a reminder, June is almost over. We only have one more week for you to earn your free prize or your free gift from me from June, which is this beautiful pressed petals journal. It's absolutely stunning. It's so pretty inside with all the beautiful pages and the different images. Um, great for writing down your thoughts, maybe make a sweet little baby journal, um, but it has this beautiful pressed petal image on the front and back. Um, so. Make sure that you go on and place your $50 order with my rewards code. Um, and you do that before June 30th and you'll be in, you'll get my free prize as well as the make and takes for this week, okay? Alrighty, I'm just ready to get into this, you guys. I'm so excited. Here are the projects that we're gonna be making today. Can you guys see these projects? So stunning. So basically, um, what I did here is I created several different backgrounds using our new pigment sprinkles. And I want to show you kind of, I'm not thinking of the words, I kind of want to show you like my process of how did I come up with these, you know, what made me um, do this. Um, because with what I feel like with p pigment sprinkles is whatever you end up creating, it's gonna tell you what it's gonna be. Yeah, I know that doesn't make any sense, but let me tell you, when I was making this background, for example, I was just mixing colors and playing around and it ended up looking like an ocean. It ended up looking like it was under the ocean. So I said, okay, well this one, I'm gonna make an underwater scene. So it wasn't like I was originally saying, I wanna make an ocean card and I'm gonna make this ocean. It wasn't like that. I let the, the pigment crystals and the, Im the background image tell me, oh, okay, I could see an underwater scene. And um, so each one of these kind of developed into whatever it was gonna be and I kind of let it tell me you know, what, what it was gonna be. For example, one of the things I was playing, I was playing around with like different color combinations yesterday and mixing and matching colors. And this is one that I came up with, I was playing around with. I made this beautiful background using the Mango Melody and Melon Mambo um, um, pigment crystals or pigment sprinkles. And then I just put this lace in front of it. I thought, oh, that black lace would be really pretty with that. How stunning is that, right? Um, so anyways, you just, you just have to play and, and just know that with watercolor crystals, anything, uh, every time you make something, it's going to be completely different. My projects probably will not look anything like what I did before, but that's okay. Every time is new. Every time is a masterpiece. Okay. So, but I'm going to attempt to show you how I created these, um, with these new pigment sprinkles. So 
They, um, Stampin' Up! used to have what they called brush -o. So remember, brush -o looked like this. brush -o colors. And I went ahead and poked holes in the tops. They had five different colors. The colors really meant nothing to me. The names of them, it was just blue, green, red, orange, and yellow. Primary colors. And now they've come out with these new pigment sprinkles. I'm going to keep calling them crystals. And they actually have names and they coordinate with Stampin' Up! colors. So this is Granny Apple Green. So I know it's going to coordinate with Granny Apple Green. And we have um, Gorgeous Grape. We have Man uh, Mango Melody, Bermuda Bay, uh, Melon Mambo, and Daffodil Delight. I know, my camera is just so excited about brush show, it decided to dive into my lap. Um, okay, so what I love is that I don't have to guess what colors these are. I love that the, um, the Stampin' Up! has already told me what colors they are. So that makes things, coordinating colors and things so much easier and a lot of fun that we have these new beautiful colors. Now this pigment sprinkles, um, they already have three holes in them at the top. So there's this little cover you lift up here and there's these three holes. And let me tell you that these holes are way too big for my personal preference. Um, so I'm gonna actually consider maybe taping over two of them um, or doing something, maybe putting some hot glue to cover two of the holes because it just dumps out. You're gonna see, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna have way too many, um, too many pigments. Um, and so it's really easy to go overboard with these. So be really careful um, with the pigment sprinkles as far as dumping out too much. You wanna be really gentle. A glue dot would be really good too, Cindy. That's a clever idea. Okay, so now um, you can, I suggest two different types of paper to use with watercolor crystals. The first is obviously watercolor paper, which works great. Um, it's durable, it lasts when you're rubbing it and putting water on it and things like that. But I found this alternative, which is the shimmery white cardstock. And I know it doesn't come through on the camera as shimmery, but holy cow. Um, I'm reading a question, sorry. Did you do the dot on the top or did they come that way? They came this way, isn't that awesome? They come, I didn't do anything special to these. They come just like this, which is so cool. And they also have Stampin' Up! names on them. So they have Bermuda Bay, they have um, Mel Melon Mambo. So they are very, very cool. Okay, so anyways, shimmery white cardstock. You can't really see, but it is just so sparkly and so pretty and so durable. I can rub my paintbrush on it. I can throw a bunch of layers of water on it and it does not tear or, or come apart. The fibers hold together fabulously. And then you finish with this beautiful sparkle. So I really refuse to use anything but shimmery white cardstock for my brush -out. Ah, I said brush -out for my pigment sprinkles um and I I also think that it makes the colors a little bit brighter too so just my personal preference there it is and again I'm giving away a pack of that shimmery white cardstock to anybody uh I'll be picking someone um out of everyone that shares my video today so make sure that you hit that share button oh so jealous Tammy I obviously need another cup <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and do this card first. And I wanted to show you, um, I chose love because um, this this month is um, the LGBTQ, um, you know, pride month. And I just wanted to, you know, show show my love. And I thought the colors were perfect for that. But for this, for this card I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna actually change love to say friend. That way it's more versatile. You could give it to a friend, a neighbor. Um, but this one is love and it says inside, you paint my world with happiness. And I thought this went perfectly with the colors. Um, so this is probably my most favorite card. Reminds you of the 60s, the bright colors, the tie-dye, yeah, and <laughs> the hippie, the hippie stage. Um, I must be a, a hippie child at heart or something, I don't know, but guys, I'm really drawn to these bright, beautiful colors. Um, and one other fair warning is, if you can see my hands, this is what happens when you use these pigment crystals, these pigment sprinkles. Um, you'll get stained fingers. And um, so if that really bothers you, wear gloves. Um, 
or uh, find a different alternative <laughs> than pigment crystals because these things get everywhere and they're super messy, but I, it doesn't bother me one bit. So we'll go ahead and start with this card. On my blog post that I have a link to in this video, there is a project sheet that has measurements and everything. Everything I use to make the projects and all the measurements are on there. And um, so if you ever wonder like, what the heck is she using? Or you missed the name, or I didn't say it right. You can always refer back to um, my, my project sheet, okay? Um, all right, so. Uh, the base is obviously a piece of basic black cut at four and no cut at five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to, before I get any more cardstock out, let's go ahead and just make the beautiful background. How about that? So I've already cut two pieces, one for the inside, one for the outside. The outside piece measures four inches by five and a quarter. The inside piece measures three and three quarters by five inches. Okay, and so for the outside piece, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my sprinkles of color all around, and I'm actually going to, you're gonna need a lot of these, just fair warning, you need a lot of paper towels. You love this, the font, the font. This font is awesome. This is actually a new framelit set called um, Hand Lettered Prose Dies, and it has the entire alphabet in cursive. I absolutely love it. Um, and then this inside part is a new stamp set called It Starts With Art. And it has some really fun sentiments. You make everything sparkle, you paint my world with happiness, follow your art and let's stay up late and craft. So this really speaks to, I think, all crafters. Um, so that is what we're gonna do. But instead, like I said, I'm gonna cut the words friend out instead of love. Um, I think that would be a fun alternative for this card. Okay, but first, let's get crazy with the crystals. All right, so a tool that we need is our Stampin' Spritzer. This little thing is just basically a spray bottle. It spritz water at the top. I filled it up with just plain old water from the sink. We're gonna need this to get our paper wet, wet and activate those crystals. All right, so with this card to kind of get create this look, you actually need to put the colors in different sections kind of away from each other so that they don't blend and get too muddy. You want them to stand out in um, their specific areas, okay? So we're just going to take all of the colors And this one we're gonna start out with is green. So let's go ahead. Now, I just, again, these just come right out. Like they just, uh, because of the holes. But I'm just gonna turn it sideways and tap until I get some crystals. And it's so crazy, the granny apple green, it's orange. It comes out orange. But as soon as it hits the water, it turns green. It's so weird. So I'm just putting some green. Again, see, look, you get a big old pile. Just be really careful. You don't need a lot of these pigment crystals. Okay. Um, let's see. We got green there. Let's do some, some Bermuda Bay. I think this one's probably my favorite color out of all of them. As you can see, it's already really messy. So I'm just doing a corner of Bermuda Bay over here. You don't need a lot. You probably can't even see the powder. I'll bring it up close so you guys can see. There is powder on there, but it's really fine. As soon as I hit this with water, you're gonna go wow as soon as it goes gets activated. So, ooh, that one <laughs> was Melon Mambo and it came out with a vengeance here. So we're gonna have a lot of pink on this card. Let's do some purple. I love the purple. Very bright and vibrant and beautiful. Come on, purple. There we go. There's some purple, and oh, it's gorgeous grape actually, if I'm gonna be specific. And then this one is Daffodil Delight. We'll put some Daffodil Delight down here. And then let's do some Mango Melody right over here. We're doing all, oh, that's a lot. We're gonna do all six colors. Okay, here's time for the magic, right? So excited for this part. 
Yeah, you just need um, liquid to activate. We just gonna have some water in this little spritzer, the Stampin' Spritzer. And here we go, guys, ready? Don't blink. Look at that. How cool is that? I feel like I need a little bit more green over here so you are always welcome to add more color. I'm gonna put a little bit of granny apple green over here. We will need to spray it again to get it, get those little crystals activated. Look at that. Very cool. Okay, so you're gonna let that sit for a minute and then be really strategic about the way that you um, kind of clean off the excess color because I've noticed with the paper towels, if you press down, um, you get like the, the print of the paper towel, the cloth. So um, I kind of tried to be really careful and just kind of pick up the excess color off the edges because it kind of spool, it pulls down on those sides. And you can just kind of, you know, you can turn it and have the water run, the color run in different directions. Um, you can kind of roll it without pressing too hard to kind of pick up the excess. And like I said, this one just looks like it might be a little bit lighter than the other one, but each one is going to be different, obviously, because the water's gonna run in different directions, the crystals are gonna land in different areas. Um, and the other cool thing that you can do is you can do layers, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry this first layer, kind of assess where we're at with it, and then if we need to, we can put more layers on. So I'm just gonna dry this up real quick. Okay, so this is my first layer, which I'm not super thrilled with. I like the darker, brighter colors. So I'm actually gonna do another section um, of color just to make it even brighter. So I'm gonna put some more of that Bermuda Bay that I love. And I'm going to put more of that purple that I like. Right there. And then I also wanna do a little bit more of the Melon Mambo because I love these three colors. So just kind of where I feel like it's maybe a little bit light and I need to add a little bit more, maybe even a little bit more Daffodil Delight. Maybe over here in the corner, okay. So we'll go ahead and spray that again. Now you suggested a paintbrush. Yes, you can color with a paintbrush. You can mix the colors together. I'll be showing you that on another card. Um, sponge brayer, Terry. I've never tried a sponge brayer, um, but that could be really cool. Woo, look at those bright colors. So again, we can just kind of spread the color around a little bit. And I don't think I want, there we go. And it may look like a muddy mess, but as you kind of wipe up the different layers, um, it doesn't always look that dark and that muddy, it's just the water. Um, I'm gonna flip it over, kind of pick up the excess. Now, you don't have to dab off any of the water. You can let it dry naturally too. Um, that also adds like a really cool look. So I'm just kind of, flipping it over and just kind of dabbing at that excess water. I don't want to take off any color, but I don't want a lot of water pooling. So I really like that. That looks really cool. That makes me happy. So I'm going to dry this up and I do love, so as if the paper starts to curl when you're heating it and drying it, um, just know that if you let it dry naturally, it will actually end up being completely flat when it's dried out all the way. If you heat it, it does curl the paper a little bit, but you can actually, I'll just show you as I'm heating this, see how it flattens out, but it starts to curl up the other direction. You can actually flip it over and it will curl the opposite direction and you can flip it over and you can just keep doing that so that it doesn't curl all in one direction completely, okay? So I just keep doing that so that it doesn't get really super curly. Can I heat emboss? Yes, great question. Actually on this card, I did just exactly that. So I'll show you that. Okay, so this is pretty good. This is pretty dry um, and this is our finished product. So like I said, every single time you do it, it's going to be different. 
Um, you're never gonna have the same image twice, which I, I kinda like. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick this up because it gets kinda messy. Okay, and now look at my hands. All right, let's do this again, but we're gonna do it on our smaller insert piece. Actually, the first thing I wanna do with this piece is actually stamp the sentiment because I want the color to kind of stay away from the words so you can actually read them. So we have our happy, uh, you paint my world with happiness. And I'm gonna do this in stays on black ink. So let me grab stays on real quick. Stays on um, does not react with water. So it's a good black ink to use when you're using watercolor. So just put that in the center, okay? And I'm gonna use my brand spanking new, actually it's already really used, this new stamping cleaning pad. Very powerful um, to clean your stamps off, the ink and things, especially I would say the red, red pigments, you know, that always stain our photopolymer stamps. This stamping, stamp cleaning pad is fabulous for that. Um, you can see I've used it a lot, um, but I noticed that it clean stays on really, really well. And that's why I've been using it is to clean stays on. So I just stamp my ink. Look at that. I just stamped my stamp, just barely tapped it and it comes completely off. It's amazing. Now, the only thing, um, the side note to this is once you use this cleaner, you need to get it completely off your stamp because it will, it is a strong cleaner. It will deteriorate your stamps. But I've found that a baby wipe is working just fine just to get that kind of extra chemical off of the stamp. Um, but it just makes for a super clean stamp. So I really love this um, cleaning pad. And there is a refill for it you can purchase. So this is a new product in our catalog this year. Okay, so there's that. All right, so I'm just using the scrap piece of paper towel here and I'm going to do the inside of my card, which I just did little spots. Now you can see, I didn't put a lot of water on this paper, otherwise I would have had um, color everywhere. So I just spritzed in the areas that I'm gonna put the crystals. So I did Bermuda Bay in one corner, Whoop, lid, and gorgeous grape in another, okay, Melon Mambo, Daffodil Delight, That was a lot. <laughs> you see how easy it is to get these crystals everywhere? <laughs> we got to do something about these three holes. All right, so then I'm just going to spray and activate that color. I'm going to let it sit there for a second, and then I'll just kind of dab um, off the excess, and then we'll dry it. I just kind of want the paper to kind of give, give it a second to soak in the color. Okay, hello to those of you that have just came on. I'm so excited you guys have chosen to join me today. Um, let's go ahead and just dab off the extra water here. You guys are just in time to see me play with these new pigment sprinkles. And that's all I'm gonna dab it. I'm just gonna dry it off now because I like the way that it's kind of fallen. The more water and the more fussing with it that you do, the less bright the colors will be, okay? So just kind of a, when you mess with it too much, you kind of just have to let it where it lands a lot of the time. Uh, Cause if you try to fuss too much, it, it can dull the color or it can um, just make it look too, drowned out, I guess is, is what I'm trying to say. All right, so there is our inside piece. Now, I had my card base here somewhere. Um, the, as you can see, the paper kind of curls a little bit. Um, so you wanna use a strong adhesive. Snail is not the answer when you're doing watercolor and you're gluing these watercolor pieces down. Um, use liquid glue or tear and tape um, because that will hold the project down. I am going to just use liquid glue because it's easy and fast. And I have a little bit of wiggle room when I put it down on the paper. 
So this is our front piece that's just gonna go right here. And as you can tell, I have a thing for black cardstock against these bright colors. I really like, uh, I feel like black makes those colors pop. Lots of water would, yes, it does. It washes it away. It makes um, it a, a more diluted color. So um, less water makes for brighter colors. And you'll really just have to play with it and not be afraid to experiment. You think I knew this until I started using it? No, I made really dull colors and ruined a lot of things. And, and again, it's just paper. Just cut up a bunch of pieces of paper and play. Um, just make a whole bunch of different designs. That's what I did and I just um, played and played and played until I liked color combinations and I liked different things that I ended up with and then I try to recreate them again. So it's a process, okay? So there is our inside and outside of the card. Now my favorite part, we're going to cut, cut out the word friend and put it on the front of our paper. And this, <laughs> do these colors not, rem maybe, you know, I'm thinking maybe like 80s. I remember these colors growing up in the 80s and 90s. Um, so maybe that's why I find that I really um, get attracted to these colors. Uh, yes, Mackenzie, I have used them that way, wetting the paper first and then putting the um, crystals on. I'll do that with the next card, with the um, octopus card. I'll do that so you can see uh, what that does, okay? Can you pick the colors in the set? No, the set comes with all six colors and it's even cheaper than the Brusho was. You get six colors for $25, um, where Brusho was only the five colors for $30. So that's really cool. And these ones are already prepped and ready to go for you. You don't have to poke holes or do anything like that. So uh, I thought it was a really awesome deal this, this month or this year. Okay, so we're gonna do the friend. Now I wanted to use all because friend is six letters and we just so happen to have six colors so I wanted to have all six colors represented in our um, word friend so we have daffodil delight granny apple green melon mambo gorgeous grape bermuda bay and the last one is mango melody which I have here so we'll do mango melody I'm just getting those pieces okay so let's go ahead and cut out our Cut out our words, our letters, I guess I should say. I really love this um, alphabet. It comes with a really cool stamp set. You can buy it in a bundle for sa and save 10%. Um, and it comes with a stamp set that has definitions for words, like it'll say grateful and then the definition for grateful. It's really cute. Um, so lots of cute um, ideas brewing in my mind for these fun new framelits and stamp set. So we'll go ahead and we'll try to cut out as many as we can. All right, so here's our letters. Maybe. There's a little dot for I, so we're gonna have to be careful with that. Okay, all right. And then the other thing we need is a strip of cardstock. This should measure three quarters by uh, four and a half. Okay, so go ahead and glue this down. <laughs> it's like, you know how women, like they, they joke about how women have to carry all the groceries in at once. It's like, God forbid we actually do more than one, <laughs> more than one uh, trip. <laughs> so that's me. <laughs> All right, so we're going to just glue these letters on. And I'm just putting a little bit of liquid glue. You could do glue dots maybe. F. And I'm just going to do them kind of in the center of the black strip. Yay, look at that. Oh, pff. maybe I do hate the glue. Okay, friend, yay, and then inside. You paint my world with happiness. How fun is that? Very, very cool, you guys. Definitely love this project so much. One of my favorites. So we got love and we got friend. And we have these beautiful backgrounds that look like paint. How cool is that? 
I see lots of hearts, so I think you guys love this card. I'm so glad because it really, really made me happy when I made this card. Uh, definitely my colors and my, my style for sure. All right, so the next card we're going to do is this octopus card where I was telling you we're going to do this background. Um, the background piece, again, is just that kind of normal uh, four by five and a quarter. And um, let's go ahead and put another scrap of paper towel. And um, with this one, like I said, I let the card kind of tell me what it was going to be. So this card I used Bermuda Bay and Granny Apple Green. Those are the only two colors I used in this card. And I had to do it in layers. Um, so the first layer is just going to be the brush show. And we had um, Mackenzie, I believe it was, that asked about spraying the water first. Now you can get it wet with a spritzer or you can get it wet with a paintbrush and just get the um, aqua painter and just put water all down the card or you can just spray it like this. And you can see it's already changing color because there's crystals everywhere. They get everywhere, you guys. So just know that ahead of time that they will be everywhere. Okay. I'm going to use granny apple green first and I'm just going to sprinkle Wow, that is a lot of sprinkles. Like I said, it just comes on real big, chunky, chunky mess. But you can see as soon as it hits the water, it starts to activate. And then we're gonna do some Bermuda Bay. And then we still need to activate it some more with some more water. And I should have brought uh, a refill. We might have to interrupt this broadcast to go get a refill of water. I should have filled two spritzers. Okay, so there's our first layer of color. So cool, right? So pretty. I'm gonna get some down here. Okay, so it's starting to, including getting them up your nose. <laughs> oh yeah, you could breathe in the powder for sure. It's very fine. Look at my fingers, you guys. <laughs> It gets messy. All right, so I'm actually, I really like the way this looks. Charging you every time you say brush show and not pigment sprinkles. Totally, Jill. I keep saying brush show. I've been trained. Now it's pigment sprinkles and I can't get it out of my head. Just like uh, last week when it was a cuckoo clock and I kept calling it a birdhouse and a treehouse and all kinds of craziness. You, you guys didn't know you were crafting with a crazy lady, did you? <laughs> Okay, so this is almost completely dry. It doesn't have to be 100% dry. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my aqua painter and I'm gonna make these lighter spots by um, just sprinkling water on the card itself. So I'm just going to put some water out on the tip of my brush and I'm just going to just randomly throw sprinkles of water on the card. Okay, so that is going to create those areas where it's lighter. Now you have to dry your paper for this effect. You have to dry it before you throw the water on, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so um, then I'm just gonna take another piece of paper towel and I'm just going to blot those sections just to get the water up. Look at that, isn't that cool? Now, just like Barb said or I think it was Barb who said you can make a starry sky like these could be stars. I thought it also looked kind of like bubbles, right? Okay, um, then I wanted to make it a little bit more dark. So I went on with a second layer and I went ahead and went with the Bermuda Bay and I just put another layer of crystals. Okay, Mackenzie, we'll see you later. Have fun being a grandma. <laughs> All right, so just gonna get some of these bigger clumps of pigment crystals so that they are wet. So you can start to see, you can do these different layers um, and uh, the suspense is killing you. <laughs> and you can even, you can blot it. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna try and blot and try not to get um, too much of a pattern from the paper towel. You can see you do, I do already see a pattern, but 
you can pat it dry. And you can see there's really dark spots where the crystals didn't really activate with water very well, so we can do that again. And dab up that extra, but I kind of like the dark spots. I think it's kind of cool. Okay, so there's our second layer. Again, you can do this over and over in different layers. Um, and so I'm just gonna dry this second layer and then we'll do some more water spots. Okay, so now that it is almost 100% dry, let's go ahead and again, just put water down to the end of your paintbrush and just sprinkle that water on to your card, like so. Okay, and then let's pat dry, and then we will heat it the rest of the way so that it's all done. And uh, have baby wipes handy, because like I said, those micro crystals get everywhere. And so you can see how much color I'm picking up just by running a wipe across. I'm sure I have it everywhere, in my carpet and in my clothes and all over my hands. So again, this is just a messy, that's just kind of, you know, what you sign up for when you use pigment sprinkles is just, you're gonna have a mess, okay? And it's fun, fun to be messy and then you can clean up afterwards. So I'm just gonna dry this all the way this is kind of our end product. Doesn't that look like water? Isn't that cool? All right. So I see you guys have all kinds of brainstorming ideas going through. Mom wants to know how you can get a swirl pattern. Cindy's over there telling me about a brand of paper towels for crafting that I've never heard of, but now I need to find. Um, so yeah, you guys are awesome. Patty can see the sea. Look. See the sea. Har, har, har. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this into an actual card. How about that? Um, so we're gonna start by stamping some seaweed in our dark um, stays on black ink uh, because it's already kind of a dark scene. You want them to, um, uh, to be seen. If I had used a green, they would have really been washed, washed away, I guess. You wouldn't have been able to see it. So just stamp the green. Stamp the grain, stamp the seaweed with black stays on ink onto your card. I just do it at different levels, some low, some high. Seaweed is not all the same length, right? So let's do a tall one over here. Okay, so we've got our seaweed at the bottom, which is super cool. And we also need to stamp our octopus. I actually stamped him on a piece of Whisper White and I stamped him in Bermuda Bay, which I put it in the wrong tray. Here we go. Bermuda Bay ink. I like this little guy. He's kind of cool. Make sure he's good and inked up. And stamp him. How cool is he? And then, actually I need to keep this out for a second. The other thing we need to do is stamp um, this, how I did this label here. Um, I took this uh, piece of kind of, I don't know, grungy, it, it reminds me of like the sea floor. And I put, I inked in Bermuda Bay, I stamped off on a scrap of paper. I'm gonna use this as a scrap of paper here. I stamped off like three times because I really wanted a really super light image as just kind of a background to the label. Okay, so you can see it's a really, 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 really light. And if you look at the label, it's got also a, just a light background. So then I'll take the sentiment, have a wonderful adventure. I'm gonna stamp that in, have in Bermuda Bay, right in the center of our image, so see like so, okay. I believe that's all the stamping we have to do. Okay, so the other pieces that we need, um, so we're gonna punch, we're gonna punch this label. This is the Timeless Label Punch, brand new. Timeless Label Punch, we're gonna punch our sentiment out, okay? 
And then I also cut out in advance, if I can find it, I cut out a net, a sand dollar, and this little seaweed image from the framelits out of Bermuda Bay. So I already did those. The only thing we need to do is cut out our octopus because we have to actually stamp him before we could do that. And this is using the under the sea framelit dies, which are really, really cool. They have so many fun little things you can cut out. We're gonna get our little octopus and cut him out real quick. And then we can easily just put this guy together. And then I don't think I cut myself a piece, but I need a piece of Whisper White to back the um, the brush, the pigment sprinkles. So I didn't cut that, but that is measuring uh, five and three eighths by four and an eighth. So I'm just cutting that off camera real quick. Okay, so there we go. See how quick I am? <laughs> Okay, so then we're just gonna glue these pieces together. Oh, I also have a piece of the burlap ribbon, which is gonna go with our little decorations. I love this set. I used it in one of the projects for, our, for my Maui bingo that I did. And I want to use him a lot more. I do too, I like him in the blue. I stamped him in, in black, I stamped him on on black and tried to color with brusho and I just wasn't brusho pigment sprinkles and I just wasn't um, happy with anything and then when I finally stamped them on white with Bermuda Bay I was really happy with it so you guys don't get to see the creative mess or all the mistakes and take twos take threes take fours I do um, but there are quite a few before I find something that I actually like so if you get discouraged when at first you don't succeed just remember me <laughs> and know that I cut out like five of these guys before I was happy with the end result. <laughs> so, so there's our background piece. Isn't that just stunning? So beautiful. Um, to put on our piece here, I did glue down the net first. I know, Debbie, I remembered, and I uh, still want to create more things for you just because you bought the set. Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit of glue um, on the center. It doesn't really need to be everywhere because this is all gonna be covered and it'll be it'll be glued really well. I put a piece of tear and tape behind my ribbon because I wanted to glue the ribbon down. Let's see, where is he at? There we go. Just put a piece of tear and tape on the back of the ribbon. And and that is kind of long, so let's actually trim it down a little bit. Let's trim this side. Trim both sides. Okay. So we'll put that down like so. And then I glued um, my starf or my sand dollar. So it's all about kind of just layers. I think I actually did that underneath, but this time it's going over, whatever. Whatevs. Put that down. And then we need to glue this down. I think this one I tucked underneath. So it was under the burlap, and then this was on dimensionals. And then we put the octopus on dimensionals as well. So, two dimensionals here. Thank you, I'm glad you like it. Really, like, just layer it, right? Just a bunch of fun little layers. And then we got our little octopus. He's fun. But I just love this background. It would also make a beautiful background for a mermaid card. Um, made me wanna borrow Tammy's mermaid set again. <laughs> I just need to buy that set, honestly. I really like it. Um, it could be a mermaid card, it could be a fish card. I know we have a new, um, fish car fish stamp set which has like seahorses and seashells and things in the catalog so there's lots of different options when you're doing this kind of watery background and then I tucked him underneath a little bit just just a tiny bit and there you go we have this beautiful 
background. And like I said, you can see every single time you do it, it's gonna be different. So don't be discouraged when your card doesn't look like your neighbor's or doesn't look like mine. Um, every single card that's created is a masterpiece. So how fun is that? Beautiful, right? Are you guys falling in love with these pigment sprinkles? Because the colors are just wow. Just wow, you guys. Okay. Last but not least is this beautiful background. I felt like I was creating designer series paper, quite honestly, when I made this. Because we are going to create these beautiful flowers and actually paint with the crystals. Not finger paints, though it looks like I'm finger painting. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to emboss with uh, clear embossing powder um, to create this image. Okay, so I have my piece and this is again that five and a half, five and a quarter by four. And I have my little embossing buddy. This is a must when you're embossing. You pass this over your cardstock to make sure that you don't um, have the embossing powder stick to anything else. Okay, so I did my embossing buddy. I have my flower image, which I'm going to stamp in Versamark, and then I'm going to stamp onto the card. So we're going to just ink it up with Versamark, and we're just going to stamp the image everywhere. And it's really hard to see. You have to kind of look in the reflection, and you can see like a faint image of what you stamped. Hopefully you don't overlap. Not the end of the world if you overlap. You're just gonna create your own kind of masterpiece. But you just wanna make sure that you get nice crisp images. Let's see. One in this corner. One right here. And then I think I can maybe fit something over here. Let's see. Okay. There we go. All right. So after we've got all our Versamark on there, I have my little tray. I probably need a bigger tray. <laughs> but I have my little tray and I have my clear embossing powder. And I'm just going to dump this all over. I want it to cover all of the image. And you can see immediately where it sticks to um, where it sticks to the image and not the cardstock. Okay, so I'm going to do this end now, like so. Make sure everything is good and covered. Okay, so then once we've got our clear embossing powder on there, let's go ahead and just dump the rest back in here. Okay, and then we're going to heat set this. So we're going to heat emboss. So just use um, something to hold down the paper while you heat emboss because you don't want to burn your fingers as you're holding the paper. And only run the heat tool um, until it turns until the um, powder turns shiny. Uh, as soon as the powder turns shiny, stop because you're going to, you don't want to burn your paper um, or heat it too long. Okay, I'm just going to put in here, um, now like let's say that this is way too much work for you and you do not want to um, have to deal with the mess, okay? Let's just say that's you. Well, there is an alternative and I did wanna show you guys this and that is the called the Sea, sea Silhouette um, Designer Series Paper and it looks like brush show and it's in all these different designs. So like, for example, you can see this one already has the flower resist and the green, kind of like this, right? So you could use this paper instead of this paper and just coordinate with these colors. So um, this looks like the pigment sprinkles and it has all kinds of fun designs. So this could be the ocean, right? And you wouldn't have to make the mess. So lots of different options, um, the Sea of Silhouette, is really beautiful designer series paper. So again, you don't have to make a mess. I like to make a mess. <laughs> mess is my middle name. Um, so it doesn't bother me, but that is a non-messy alternative, okay? 
All right, so now we're going to actually paint our flowers. So what I do here, this is why, again, why I'm using that media mat, is because I want to um, put the put the sprinkles right here on my mat. You can also use a block if you have a big stamping block. You can put uh, piles of the powder on a block that can wipe off easily. Um, so basically what you'll wanna do is take your crystals that you wanna use. So for me, I wanted to use the Melon Mambo. So I just put some powder on the media mat itself. I wanted Gorgeous Grape. So I put some of that. And then I needed a little bit of Daffodil Delight for the centers of the flowers. A little bit, that's a whole lot. And then lastly, for the background, I'm using Granny Apple Green. Wow, that's so much, okay. So you can see how easily this all comes out and um, we're gonna be using this paintbrush. This is the Aqua Painter. I'm using the smaller brush head. There's a larger brush tip and then there's this thinner one. Um, so the first thing I did was I took my Melon Mambo and look, you can see as you mix it up with the color, this beautiful color that you get. I don't want it to be too bright and vibrant, but it, now you're kind of, um, now you're gonna paint with it. And so you just, for me, I just kind of wanted to do the inner part of the flower in this Melon Mambo. So I just did that around all of my flowers. And I like how when you emboss, it kind of helps control the color, kind of helps control the water, it kind of pulls in the areas you want it to pull and doesn't go into areas you don't. I mean, it's not perfect, it's not gonna be exact. I don't want it to be exact because then it doesn't look like watercolor, but um, it does help kind of contain the color. And last this last flower here okay so there's our melon mambo just clean off your brush and now you can move on to the next color so I'm gonna go with purple now look at this bright gorgeous grape purple here and I'm gonna do the outside of the flowers who that's really dark I have a lot of paint on my brush and you can tone it down. See, when you don't have as much, <laughs> it's definitely a prettier purple. This is really dark. And I'm actually just picking up the color from this flower because I wanna lighten it up. It's really dark. Again, I'm, I'm going out of the lines intentionally, um, but that um, clear embossing does help. Okay, so there's that one. I'm gonna pick up more purple. So you could make your flowers any color you want, but I liked this um, combination of purple and pink and yellow. Again, I'm just kind of coloring in circular motions, just filling those petals with color. Okay, so then we've got our flowers and we wanna do our centers. So here's our yellow and just color in the centers of our flowers. Isn't that cool? Okay, and then we'll do our background, which is going to be that granny apple green. So you can see I'm mixing that color and it just turns into this beautiful, bright, vibrant green. And I just kind of filled in the areas around. And I am putting a lot of water on my brush. I'm just squeezing out a lot of water because I don't want the color to be um, super concentrated. I just want it to be 
like a pretty, a pretty bright green. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. I love it. <laughs> she likes what I'm doing. So, hey, keep her on. <laughs> Addison's my biggest fan today. I like it. So just keep painting. Okay. So there you go, you guys. You have this beautiful background. You just clean this uh, ink until it comes clear on your brush. And you may find random color crystals somewhere, you know. You know how that goes. Okay. So there we go. And when does color come off? When dry does color come off when you touch it? No. So this is dry and the color does not come off. It is now part of the paper. If you got it wet again, the color would come off a little bit. But um, as dry, it doesn't, doesn't do anything. All right, so apparently this is going to be the dark section. I don't know what happened, you guys. That's, you know, that's kind of the, the part of the part of the process. Um, everything is just a little bit different. This got really heavy with the ink on that side. But like I said, every single time you do it, it's going to be different. And we'll just clean up this mess as best we can here. Get all the extra pigment crystals off. And then um, the rest of it is, again, just putting that card together. And like I said um, before, you know, I kind of let, let the card tell me what it wanted to do, right? So I had um, a piece of Melon Mambo matted on the Highland Heather. I used Highland Heather as the card base. Melon Mambo measures um, 5 and 3 eighths by 4 and an eighth. And I just put that down. I also used one of our stitched label dies to cut out this pretty circle. And um, this was in Whisper White, just normal Whisper White. And I have a sentiment from that. Um, I forgot to tell you what set I was using. I was using Floral Essence um, to color, to stamp that flower. And then I have a sentiment, all days are beautiful that begin with you. That's what we're gonna stamp in the center. And we're gonna stamp that with Stays On. And Let's see. Oops, I dropped a leaf somewhere. I don't know what I did with it. Okay, so we're gonna stamp our sentiment. And it just barely fits in here, but it's perfect. So there's that. Okay, so Tammy, your question, I don't know um, what type of mat the stays on is, but it's not that kind of mat. I bet this is foam. I think you're right. I think it is foam. Just cleans that stays on like nobody's business. Cleans all ink like nobody's business. It's great. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely, this is a different type of, of ink pad. Okay. Nope, it's not always the same. You're right. Okay, so the other thing I did to back this, I punched a piece of Melon Mambo out of the Everyday Label Punch. And I also punched some green leaves out of Granny Apple Green. So what I did was I put, um, I put the leaves on dimensionals on the back of my label. So I just kind of determined where, excuse me, where I wanted the leaves. And then I just secured it on the back of this label with a dimensional. like so, and then I determined where I wanted this one. Put it, put one on the back. And then I did like another one just to hold the label down really good. Put that in the center of our label here. And then what I like to do when I'm putting ribbon on the back of a label is I like to run a couple lines of adhesive and then do a zigzag pattern. So one, and I'll turn it over on itself, two, and then lastly, three. So that I have, um, kind of, it kind of helps hold everything together. Okay. 
All right, so then we need to put, if this is completely dry, let me just heat, heat it real quick. Is there a difference? Yes, Debbie, so you don't wanna use Memento with water. Only use stays on. That's the big difference. Memento is for blends, stays on is for water. And I'm kind of glad I'm gonna put my label over here, we'll cover this <laughs> dark area. See, there's no such thing as a mistake, only happy accidents, right, Bob Ross? Bob Ross told me, so it must be true. Because then that's exactly where my label goes. Okay, so then we're just gonna glue this down. Look how pretty that is. Yeah, Rhonda, I've been using it for both and it's been working fabulous. It does stain the ink pad. Um, and I was reading the instructions and it doesn't like, it says to, you know, rub it over the stamp. So it must stain, um, it must just stain the ink pad. I've tried blotted off, blotting off some of the ink, which I was able to do. And there is a refill that you can purchase. So it must just be like the chamois and it just gets um, dirty. I don't know. I'm probably using it wrong, but how it's working for me but it really does a number so I was telling someone that was at my house the other day I used the ink pad cleaner on an old stamp that I had used a lot of red pigment inks on and you know how it stains the photopolymer stamps pretty good um, and I ran it over I hadn't even used it I just ran the ink cleaner over it and it removed a lot of the pink dye um, even on something that was really old that had just been sitting there. So that was exciting. Um, so that's kind of, that was this, oh, I'm sold kind of moment type thing. All right, so I'm just gonna put my little label down there and now I have this beautiful stunning card to give to a friend. So how beautiful is that, you guys? Do you guys love these cards as much as me? I'm loving these new crystals. I am so, I am such a fan. I'm sold. <laughs> I have had so much fun. <sighs> you guys, thank you so much for joining me on Sunday. Don't forget, if if pigment sprinkles are not your thing, you can always get the um, See a Silhouette uh, designer series paper too. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you place an order. You guys could get your my projects from today for free. I'd mail them to you. You'd get some beautiful pigment sprinkle. Uh, happy mail. So place your order today. Um, you guys are super fabulous. Thank you so much for joining me. We will see you next week for more fun. Bye.